Hi, I'm Kathy Spahn, and I'm the President and CEO of Helen Keller International, and also a member of the Executive Committee of the International Agency for Prevention of Blindness. And I'm here today with Tulsi, who's the Executive Director of Aravind Eye Care System, and we're talking about diabetic retinopathy on this day that was the first formal meeting of the new Diabetic Retinopathy Working Group of IAPB. And people tend to think of diabetes as associated with countries that are very wealthy, where there's a lot of obesity. So why is diabetes a threat in developing countries where we more often hear about undernutrition? Is it really a problem? Uh, it certainly is a problem, and I think it's some of the myths have been that it's an urban-centered and rural people don't have it. Uh, but then the recent surveys have just proven all of that wrong. Uh, it may have to do largely with how the people have been configured in terms of the, the, the metabolic uh, makeup, you know, which in the, in the recent maybe a decade or two decades, there have been tremendous change both in the food habits mm -hmm. as well as in the, the work habits. So with a lot of automation, you know, the, the physical work that used to be a lot ha seems to have gone down. So the growth in countries such as <laughs> India, where you're from, is now quite extreme, yes? Yes, yes. So, so you have to look at three things happening, you know, the, the, the diet change, right. the change in, in a more sedentary way of working, and aging of the population. So I think that's, that's kind of a perfect recipe for uh, explosion of diabetes that we're actually seeing in, in India. And then where IAPB comes into it is obviously that you can go blind when you've had diabetes. So how long does that take? How many people with diabetes will have vision problems? Uh, it depends a lot on how well the diabetes is controlled. Like for instance, when we initially started the, the intervention to, to manage diabetic retinopathy, uh, the ratio used to be about 25-30% of those with uh, diabetes would have diabetic retinopathy, and of that maybe uh, another third would require uh, active intervention. If not, they would get into serious uh, problems. Uh, but with better follow-up and better counseling education and better uh, diabetes control, uh, we're seeing very significant uh, changes for the better. Well, that's for the credit of Aravind, because those are better rates than some of the ones I'm aware of in the United <laughs> States. Um, yeah. Aravind has been a leader in eye care, all areas of eye care. You've been an innovator, and in diabetic retinopathy, I'm sure there are new things you're doing that all IAPB members could learn from. So can you talk about the Aravind approach to treating diabetic retinopathy, to screening and treating? Yeah, so we recognize that uh, the problem in diabetic retinopathy, I think starts off with the level of awareness, not mm -hmm. just the patients or the public, but also with the providers. But not every doctor who treats a diabetic actually knew they have to refer the patient to an eye doctor. So the diabetes yeah. doctors themselves we're not, don't know to do that. They're not aware of it. And, cert and in some, if they're aware of it, the practice was not there, that they should make sure the, doc the patient goes there. So it started off at that level. Uh, which is at one level of uh, work. So we have lots of programs to, to address that. Uh, the other level was to use uh, technology. You know? uh, because uh, at, at primary uh, eye care, mm -hmm. you are on the ground, they're able to create easy access, which means almost all the people come to, come to the center for some form of care or not. And then we're trying to leverage that to, to kind of do early screening to detect uh, uh, at, at the early stage, we offer uh, glycemic screening you know, with uh, glucometers and uh, do basic fundus exam, you know, use uh, telemedicine, low cost telemedicine technologies. So how do you yeah. do that? What do you do with telemedicine? <clears throat> uh, we basically have built a, a simple electronic medical record, mm -hmm. uh, which the nurse uh, or the technician at the center can uh, populate. Uh, for imaging, we used a regular digital camera you know, with an adapter which can take uh, reasonable fundus images in the sense I think the problems would be detected. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're using today commercially available broadband uh, for uh, having real-time 
uh, dialogue and uh, uh, discussion with the doctor in the base hospital. So when you've yeah. taken the picture of the retina, where does that get sent? Uh, that gets uh, actually gets attached to the medical record, but because everything is networked, so the doctor who is sitting, say, 50, 60 miles okay. away can see it instantly. Yeah, so, so it can so all happen in real time? In real time. It happens in real time. Yeah, so, so the patient gets uh, yeah, consultation and the advice directly from the doctor. No, and that seems That's to terrific. significantly yeah. increase compliance as well. So having put this program together, you've also recently come up with a publication that explains what this works. Is that something that's available from Aravind that IPB members can access? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So in fact, uh, it got published by Vision 2020 India, okay. which is an, sort of an official arm of IAPB for India. So it is technically their publication and it is available uh, both uh, in, in print version and as a PDF for everyone who wants it, yeah. Which is wonderful because I think we all need to replicate what you've been able to do so well in Aravind because this is a problem that is getting much, much worse around the world. So thank you very much. Thank you.